in this video I'm going to go through uh, our free quiz that you can also try yourself uh, API style source inspector rotating equipment so you can also study our first and second module for free which covers basic facts and body of knowledge and the scoring area with exam tips this uh, quiz is time for 20 minutes so I'm going to start the quiz. And also it is, uh, the progress is, uh, you can see the progress here as you go along. And you can also flag off like exam questions, real API exam question, you can flag off the uh, the question that you, you are in doubt. Uh, impellers are balanced individually. This is like balancing wheel of the car. So you cannot do it all in an assembly. You do it individually and then do all in assembly once it is on the rotor. Rotor is balanced as an assembly with shaft, sleeves and impellers. So the whole thing need to be assembled and then the whole thing is um, with impellers that are individually balanced, they are assembled and then uh, they are balanced all over again in you know, assembly. Casting should be heat treated and rough machined. File and machine surfaces are subject to ND examination at a machining facility after Hydro test. You can do before hydro test, but you have to certainly do it after hydro test because the hydro test is like one and a half times of the maximum allowable uh, working pressure. So if there is any crack uh, that is uh, existing crack, uh, it will grow during hydro test, and you can see it much better than before the hydro by ND techniques such as UT or RT. That's the reason that you have to do it after high test. The best quality achieved if in this casting with investment castings this is a bit more expensive but you get uh, better dimensional control and better quality control. Steel gland is supposed to be hydro tested to one and a half times of maximum allowable working pressure. Remember that any hydro test for any pumps uh, and its accessories like seal gland or casing is always one and a half times. Mechanical seals should not be used during the hydro test but instead should be used during the mechanical running test. The reason is that if you use the seals during hydro test, it might damage the seal. Most of the seals are not designed to operate at test pressure. They're designed to operate at maximum allowable working pressure and the test pressure is more than half times of that. So you might damage it. So they use uh, some dummy seals. They call it the slave seals. They use it during the Hydro test and then they replace it with the actual seal that should that shall be used on the pump or rotating equipment for the mechanical running test because you are, you want to check the performance of that uh, at maximum allowable working pressure and that's good enough for the seal's performance. Coupling gauze should be constructed with sufficient stiffness rigidity to withstand. A static load in any direction without the guard contacting moving parts of 200 pounds. The so 200 pounds is the uh, normal weight of a human being. If somebody stands on that, it doesn't damage the moving parts, and that's the reason. Loop oil piping is subject to hydro test. Again, here you see it's one and a half times. Anything, accessories, the pumps, casing, loop oil is always tested. The pressure tested at hydro tested about one and a half times of maximum normal working pressure or operating pressure. Connect 
performance data and vibration and temperature reading for minimum number of five points on the performance curves. It's always minimal five points. For final inspection, you need all of the following except you need here the data sheet you need general arrangement drawing you shall need well uh, process and instrumentation diagram piping and instrumentation diagram you need electrical and instrumentation wiring diagram you need bill of materials and packing list uh, there is no as such thing as final inspection procedure normally even if it is there that's not absolutely necessary so choose the best answer here you cannot delete the first three so you click on the fourth one higher rpm steam turbines are more efficient but lord but but uh, Less efficient, but the smaller in size. I think this is the correct. So let's see. So naturally, if the RPM goes more, it can produce more power. And then you got the smaller in size. So why they always don't do high RPM? Because uh, you got more wear and tear. So it's a compromise between reliability and more wear and tear and more uh, uh, power and then obviously if the RPM goes and the more weird tier it is less efficient like uh, the percentage of efficiency per the power that you apply and the input and output you get less because it's more wear and tier and for the same size you can get more power that's the uh, advantage Source inspector should verify that the oil heater hot section is located at least two inch below minimum oil level. So it should be at least two inch below minimum oil level. The heater. Another advantage of the rotary screw type positive displacement compressor is that this type of compressor cannot surge, and therefore any complex control schemes and uploading bypasses are avoided. Because it gives always a constant uh, volume uh, per say second or per rotation and hence it cannot surge. There is no cavitation here. Any screw compressor should comply with I think it's 617. Let's see. I mean, you guys need to remember that. Oh, sorry, I was wrong. So it's 619. So you have to remember uh, this is a potential exam question. You need to remember which API base uh, concerns which type of the compressor. The work and repair is approved by the purchaser and verified by source inspector. So among other duties, a uh, source inspector is representing the client and uh, verify what has been agreed between a uh, purchaser and vendor regarding the rework and repair. Make sure that what has been approved is actually being implemented in practice. Most of time means the period required after the driver's trip for equipment to come to a rest. So when you, uh, the compressor is stripped, you know, it's shut down for any reason. The time it takes till, till it comes to a complete standstill is called cost down time. Critical speed is when sharp rotation on the speed at which the rotor bearing support system is in state of resonance. 
uh, I would choose this one. It might be both A and B and uh, remember that ABI never uses the word A and B. So here they put both A and B, but we just wanted to highlight that we never use this. So state of resonance and state of uncontrollable excessive vibration means the same thing. But resonance is more widely used, so I have chosen this one. But here obviously this both one and two means the same meaning, so both A and B are correct. But API never uses such terms of both A and B. Just wanted to remind you guys. Maximum continues the speed. The speed at least equal to I think it's hundred five percent. Some are hundred ten and some is hundred five, but mostly hundred five. Yes. EIR total indicator reading difference between the maximum and minimum readings of a dial indicator turning one complete revolution of the monitor surface. In the last question, trip speed is the speed at which the turbine shuts down. This is, I think, what I would select. Uh, because that's that's what it means tripping is shutting down so it's not the maximum or minimum speed or when it chokes you can view the result um, if you put your email and your name and uh, the, an email also will go to your that you about the score sheet that you have got for this quiz and also it comes with uh, explanation and knows why a uh, question is right or a question is wrong as you can see here thank you for watching our videos